The new Ryzen 7000 series processors are some seriously powerful CPUs, but they can be tough to keep cool. That's where the new Enermax Aquafusion Advanced All-in-One Liquid Coolers come in. We've got a couple here in the studio and we're gonna put them to the test on the Zen 4 CPU. Can they handle the heat? Let's find out. It's the money. What's up guys, CJ here from Elevated Systems. I've been using Enermax products for years, building custom PCs with their power supplies and other components since the 90s. But recently, I had a bit of a hiccup with two of their Liquitech TR4 AIOs on my Threadripper rig. They both failed on me. Now, I was able to fix the issue, but along with other reviewers, I made sure to share my experience with my audience. And you know what? Enermax didn't threaten me with legal action or try to blacklist me like some companies have done with smaller creators. They actually reached out, apologized, and offered to send me some other products to review independently. That's the kind of transparency and accountability I can respect. So today we'll be checking out their new Aquafusion Advanced All-in-One Liquid Coolers. I have both the 240 and 360 millimeter versions, but this review is mainly set up for and focused on the 240 mil AIO. However, I will be testing the 360 just for some comparison. We'll go over the specs and features, look at some of the installation considerations, and of course, measure their cooling performance, comparing them to some other AOs I have on hand to determine if the Aquafusion Advanced is a good choice in terms of performance and value. The Aquafusion Advanced is packaged in recyclable fiberboard with a minimal use of single-use plastics. The box includes a closed-loop cooler, two or three Enermax Square Advanced RGB fans, mounting hardware for modern CPU sockets, including LGA-17 and AM5. This is the most significant upgrade over the previous generation Aquafusion and Liquitech 3s, which are not compatible with AM5 out of the box. There are also connection cables and an optional RGB controller. The cooler features an aluminum radiator measuring 394 millimeters by 120 millimeters by 27 millimeters for the 360 millimeter size and 274 millimeters by 120 millimeters by 27 millimeters for the 240. The radiator has a 16 millimeter thin fin stack with 13 rows of fins and a fins density of 20 fins per inch. It's connected to a pump block by 400 millimeter tubes the dual chamber pump lock measures 69 millimeters by 69 millimeters by 58.5 millimeters and has an infinity mirror RGB design and the Enermax logo. The three phase brushless motor has a maximum RPM of 3,300 and the 120 millimeter PWM fans have a rated speed of 500 to 2000 RPM with a maximum airflow of 79.8 cubic feet per minute static pressure of 3.6 millimeters H2O and a rated lifespan of 100,000 hours. The fans are illuminated by hub mounted five volt addressable RGB LEDs and has an RGB ring around the fan frame. They use standard four pin PWM fan connections and a three pin five volt ARGB connector for a direct motherboard connection. Enermax offers a two year limited warranty on the Aquafusion Advanced. Installation of the AIO is pretty straightforward and Enermax provides both a good set of instructions and also links to installation videos for each socket type. Installing onto my AM5 motherboard was accomplished by simply screwing in some standoff screws and securing the block to the socket with four spring tension thumb screws. One thing to note is due to the cold plate design, Enermax recommends installing the pump lock with the tubes to the right of the socket adjacent to the memory dims for optimal performance. In fact, as the faceplate cannot be rotated, this is the only way the RGB logo can properly be oriented. The AIO comes with two or three fan splitter cable for the PWM connection and the three pin pump cable plugs directly into a motherboard pump or fan header. The ARGB cables daisy chain together and use the included splitter cable to connect the fans and pump ARGB, which can then plug directly into a three pin five volt ARGB motherboard header or the included SATA powered RGB controller. The test system I'm using is a Ryzen 5 7600X on a MSI B560 motherboard with the PBO set to maximum level three, which boosts the TDP to 125 watts and allows the CPU to boost to over 5.5 gigahertz. The system is installed in a Fractal Meshify 2 case with three Noctua NFA 12x25 front mounted intake fans, the Fractal 140mm rear exhaust fan with the AIO radiator top mounted and the fans in a push through exhaust configuration or in a typical gaming rig config. Again, this test system is geared toward the 240mm AIOs. 
I'll be comparing both the 240 and 360 millimeter Animax AIOs to about a half dozen other AIOs I have on hand. I'll be running three tests for each AIO, a synthetic ADA64 CPU stress test, which will push the CPU to the absolute limit, but isn't typical of a normal PC workload. Next is a 4K to 1080p HEVC video transcode using Handbrake, which is a worst possible scenario for an actual real world workload. And finally, 20 minutes of Cyberpunk 2077 gameplay at 1080p medium settings for close to a worst case gaming scenario for a CPU. And jumping into the numbers, we see that the ADA64 torture test, there's only a three degree separation between the smaller AIOs in both max and average temps with the Enermax Aquafusion Lickmax 3 and the Lian Lee Galahad in a virtual tie. Even the larger 360 mil coolers aren't able to pull away by much in this test. However, all the liquid coolers significantly outperform the Scythe air cooler, which couldn't keep the 7600 from thermal throttling. In the handbrake test, the results are very similar. However, the Galahad 240 does pull a little ahead of the pack, even matching the performance of the larger AIOs, while the two Enermax 240 models are evenly matched. Now, in the gaming test at a normal CPU usage, the Aquafusion Advanced 240 does appear to deal with the fluctuating CPU frequencies and usage better than the other 240 mil AIOs, even matching the 360 version, which also demonstrates that in a gaming rig, a 240 mil AIO is really the limit of what's needed for the 7600X. Moving on to total system noise levels, interestingly, the older Enemax is the quietest cooler tested with the new Aquafusion Advanced being the loudest of the 240 mil AIOs. With that 4.3 decibel difference calculating out to about a 40% increase in perceived loudness. But let's finish up with the most important chart in my opinion, the cost comparison of these coolers. And looking at cost compared to the max gaming temps, the older Enermax seems like a good value with about a 9% increase in peak temps over the Aquafusion 240, but at 20% cheaper. Unfortunately, Lickmax 3 doesn't include mounting hardware for the AM5 fixed backplate. I actually used the Aquafusion mounting hardware to test it. The Lurker V240 is also a pretty good value here. However, it's an older AIO and depending on when you're watching this video may or may not still be available. This leaves the Aquafusion Advance 240 with the best performance for a gaming PC at 100 bucks. It's a decent value and looking at the bottom of the list again demonstrates why a 360 mil AIO for a six core CPU isn't really necessary. However, I will say that at just $20 more, the Aquafusion 360 may be a good option for, and I rarely drop the F-bomb, but future-proofing should you decide to upgrade to a higher core count Ryzen CPU later, as the AM5 platform is promised to support the next couple generations of Ryzen CPUs. Now, the one thing I can't speak to is the longevity of these Enermax coolers. My LickTek TR4 was the best AIO for the Threadripper, until it wasn't. But on the same note, I did run this Enermax Lickmax 3 on a Ryzen 3700X at load 24 seven for a year straight with zero problems. It performs the same now as the day I took it out of the box. So hopefully the TR4 cooler was a one-off, but I guess time will tell. Now, apart from the performance, there are a couple of things that separate the new Enermax coolers from some of the other AIOs on the market. First of all, let me say that while subjective, I do like the square design of the fans with the RGB detail in the frame. However, I don't like that you can't rotate the Enermax logo on the pump block. I get that optimal performance may come from a specific orientation, but when I used the 360 cooler in a build I did a few weeks ago, I had to rotate the block 180 degrees to remove some slack from the tubes and prevent them from lying on the graphics card backplate. This left me with an upside down logo, which isn't ideal. But don't get me wrong, there are more things I do like about these AIOs. For one, there are no proprietary connectors requiring proprietary hubs or software. Almost all modern motherboards include a pump header and five volt ARGB headers. So you can plug everything into and control the fan curve and lighting from the motherboard. And while basically all RGB software is horrible, at least with these coolers, I only have to use one bad piece of software to control the lighting in my build. Another pro, these coolers are guaranteed compatible with newer CPU sockets. While most AM4 coolers are compatible with AM5, some aren't. And here's a quick tip. If you want to determine if a cooler is compatible with AM5, 
check to see if the cooler uses the stock AM4 motherboard backplate. If it does, it's very likely compatible with AM5. If it uses a separate backplate, it's not. Some companies offer upgrade kits for their older coolers. I specifically asked Intermax if they offer mounting kit upgrades, and they do. I'll pin a comment with details below. So overall, I think the Intermax AquaFusion 240 performs well in relation to its price and is a relatively good value. However, there are cheaper options available with very similar performance. As far as the 360 version, initially it performs really close to the Deepcool LS720, which is the best 360 AIO I've tested on current gen CPUs. However, to really determine that, it'll require more testing on a hotter CPU. So if you want to see that, drop a comment down below and convince me to tear apart my son's 13900K gaming rig to do it. While you're down there, don't forget to hit that like button and be sure to subscribe for more tech reviews. And I'll catch you in the next one.